someone has listened to this interview and never read or interact with C.S. Lewis before, they might get completely lost in, well, which book or which idea or which, or which part of C.S. Lewis's corpus should he start off with. So what, what advice would you give to someone who might want to start off with reading C.S. Lewis's work? Well, if you've never read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, then I would start there because um, it's such a great story. And I mean, I, I love all the Narnia stories, but I think that one is is the place to begin. Don't begin with the magician's nephew, which sometimes is, if you if you look at the um, the ordering that you get in some collections of Narnia books today, the publishers call that one number one. Um, but it's number one in the sense that the events that it tells predate um, the the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But if you read that one first, it's just a massive spoiler. Um, and it's clear, you know, he, he wrote that one later as a kind of prequel. Um, and it explains a lot what happens in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, but therefore it spoils much of the story. So begin with The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, you know, that sort of moment where Lucy walks through the wardrobe into Narnia. Um, you know, that, that's such a classic moment. And like, you know, the narrator says, you know, she had no more, when they hear about Aslan, she, the children had no more knowledge of who Aslan was than you or I. Um, but if you've already read one of the other books, then, then, then that's not true. So I'm sure that's intended to be the starting point. And as I've said, it, it introduces you to a lot of the key concepts um, that, that are right at the heart of who Lewis was. You know, that moment where the children um, are genuinely worried that Lucy has stopped just playing a game when she's telling them she's been to Narnia and that actually there might be something wrong with her. And they go to the professor whose house they're living in. And they say, you know, we're worried that she may, she may just sort of be losing her mind. And he says, just completely rationally, you know, well, what are you basing this on? Why do you think that what she tells you is not true? You know, that the, there's the argument from reason is right there. Um, you know, why would you not trust her? Is she normally unreliable? And then Edmund, of course, who's also been there, but is pretending he hasn't. You know, what about Edmund? Is he more reliable or less reliable than her? Well, much less reliable. You know, it forces them to think rationally about this in a way that is quite sort of typical of Lewis's apologetic writing. And so, again, if you're looking for a work of Christian apologetics, I think near Christianity, as we've said, is the real classic. It's just, again, a, a brilliantly clear statement of, of what he believes and why. Um, it, it, again, has these overlaps. Um, it uses imagination as well as reason too, you know, he talks about how there's a, you know, there's a, we're like, uh, he has this brilliant way of using imagery and um, analogy that I think is partly why he's so successful still today. He, there's a clarity, there's something that you know, appeals to people that you can understand what he means. You know, he's talking about we're all like, um, we're like clay sculptures in a sculptor's shop and there's a room going around um, that, we're going to get, come back to life, just as you get at the end of the line, the witch in the wardrobe, where you know the witch has been going around turning animals into stone statues, and Aslan breathes on them, and they come back to life. So that this, these are two are rather intimately connected. The other book that probably people don't read as much, but I think is just a really great read, is Surprised by Joy, um, which I've mentioned a number of times, but it's a really readable book. It's, it's his biography. So you learn a lot about him as a person or rather perhaps you don't. You learn a lot about his reading um, and, and that journey because to, for Lewis, that's what life was. Uh, largely it was reading and it was talking about books and it was thinking about books um, and it was writing books. So, you know, it, it's very interesting as a development of him as a as a reader and a thinker and a writer just as it is about his own faith and how that developed and um so it's it, it's a really interesting and well-written book i think so those are probably the three that i would start with but there's so much more as you say thanks for watching this short segment of an interview with dr simon horbin on c.s lewis if you enjoyed this interview and want to watch the whole interview, you could check out the whole interview. The link will be in the description below. Furthermore, if you would like to listen to more interviews on leading scholars in the field, then make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned to this channel. Also, if you would like to support us financially on Patreon to keep this mission sustainable and allow me to continue reaching out to these leading scholars, then consider checking us out on Patreon 
or at YouTube memberships. Those would be brilliant ways to help support this platform. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next one. God bless and goodbye. I'll see you soon.